Su Zikuan carefully wiped down his motorcycle, gazing at his beloved ride and reminiscing about the times he and Tang Ying went for rides together, unable to suppress a smile. While at work, Tang Ying also couldn't help but think of Su Zikuan. She picked up her phone, intending to send him a message. Just as she was mulling over what to write, Su Zikuan texted her first, asking if she wanted to have dinner together after work. After work, Tang Ying saw Su Zikuan looking dejected as soon as she stepped outside. Curious, she asked if he was exhausted from work or heartbroken. Su Zikuan replied bluntly, heartbroken. Then he turned and walked ahead, leaving Tang Ying speechless as she followed him. Su Zikuan suddenly asked, aren't you going to ask who broke my heart? She responded, do I need to? It must be someone impressive. He smirked, you're praising yourself, huh? I won't allow you to smile at other men. With that, he kissed her deeply and tenderly. When Tang Ying finally recovered from the intense, heartfelt kiss, she removed the ring from his hand and said, then you won't need to wear this anymore. Su Zikuan asked, are you saying you don't want me to treat you as a friend anymore? Tang Ying replied, do you kiss a friend like that? You just want me to fall for you so you can dump me later and break my heart as revenge. Su Zikuan said calmly, it's not that complicated. You captured my heart, so I'll break yours in return. Tang Ying scoffed, Su Zikuan, I never thought you were this childish. If you like me and hurt me, won't you end up hurting yourself too? He responded, who said I like you? She smiled knowingly and asked, then why does it break your heart when you see me smile at other men? Tang Ying lay on her bed, recalling the events of the day and couldn't help but smile. Su Zikuan and Tang Ying were constantly busy with work attending meetings, holding discussions with clients, brainstorming proposals, attending business dinners, and drinking to build relationships. Ma Kiwan asked Tang Ying to accompany him to another gathering, but instead, she accidentally opened a bottle of his newly acquired, very expensive wine. Caught off guard, Tang Ying repeatedly apologized, saying, I'm sorry, Mr. Ma. Ma Kiwan smiled and replied, it's fine. I bought it in the first place so that one day I could share it with you. At the gathering, everyone encouraged Tang Ying to sing. Ma Kiwan was deeply captivated by her confidence and independent beauty, and a possessive desire flickered in his eyes. Wang Yuzu noticed this. After exchanging subtle signals with Tang Ying, Wang Yuzu switched seats with her and began toasting Ma Kiwan repeatedly, drink after drink. Eventually, Wang Yuzu pretended to be drunk, giving Tang Ying the perfect excuse to say, I'll take her home. Ma Kiwan offered, I'll go with you. Tang Ying smiled politely and replied, no need. You have so many friends here. Keep enjoying the party. Once outside, Wang Yuzu turned to Tang Ying and said, if you don't like him, why do you keep provoking him? Tang Ying sighed. I thought I could handle him, but it seems I overestimated myself. Wang Yuzu shrugged. But he's Mr. Ma, after all. He's not sleazy at all, and you two actually seem like a good match. Tang Ying, however, firmly shook her head. That big CEO isn't my type at all. Tang Ying got out of the car and walked over, spotting Su Zikuan waiting downstairs. She asked, what are you doing here? He replied with a smile, I was afraid you'd forget about me. Without another word, they kissed. Seizing the moment, Su Zikuan slyly slipped the friendship ring off Tang Ying's hand. Tang Ying vented to Xinzi about how Su Zikuan kissed her and then just walked away without a word. In return, Xinzi complained about her own situation, saying, I can't even dress the way I want anymore. Su Jiabai spoils me in every way, but he absolutely refuses to let me wear anything even slightly revealing. Curious, Xinzi asked, so, how was Su Zikuan's kiss? Tang Ying shrugged and said, pretty good actually. His lips are soft, but his heart is way too hard. When Su Jiabai saw Xinzi wearing something revealing, he angrily asked, dressed like that, where were you going to? Xinzi calmly replied, I went to my sister's place. Tang Ying was upset that Su Zikuan hadn't contacted her for a week, so she decided to take matters into her own hands and reach out to him first. 
Tang Ying set an alarm to wake herself up in the middle of the night, determined to send Su Zikuan a WeChat message. When she saw his quick reply, she couldn't contain her excitement. She immediately called him and blurted out, I love you. He calmly responded, is that for real? She teased, are you trying to make me lose sleep? He replied, I was actually playing a game, but I think you really mean it. As soon as Tang Ying woke up in the morning, Su Zikuan called her, inviting her to his place to watch a movie in the afternoon. Tang Ying was overjoyed, quickly finished her makeup, and eagerly headed out to meet him. The atmosphere between them was incredibly flirtatious as Su Zikuan continued to whisper sweet nothings to Tang Ying while watching the movie. During a bathroom break, Tang Ying took the opportunity to observe Su Zikuan's bedroom. After the movie, Su Zikuan ordered hot pot takeout. While handling the food, he accidentally burned himself with the steam. Tang Ying suggested he touch his ear to ease the pain, but instead, he immediately touched her ear. They came dangerously close to kissing, but just as the tension peaked, the sound of a phone ringing broke the moment, interrupting the heated atmosphere. The phone call was from Ma Qiwan, asking Tang Ying to meet him. Tang Ying looked conflicted, wanting to refuse but eventually agreeing to go. As she prepared to leave, Su Zikuan felt a pang of discomfort in his heart. He knew that Ma Qiwan had feelings for Tang Ying, but despite his unease, he still said to her, Go ahead. Work is important. Su Zikuan, looking at the table full of food, feeling down and lowering his head. Tang Ying arrived at the place where she was supposed to meet Ma Qiwan, a large private room. Ma Qiwan greeted her and asked, I suddenly called you here did I interrupt your work? She quickly replied, no, not at all. He continued, I've invited a friend today. He said he's bringing his girlfriend, so I thought I'd invite you along as well. Tang Ying raised an eyebrow and asked, is your friend bringing his wife? Ma Qiwan replied, no, his wife is abroad. Ma Qiwan's friend, Mr. Li, arrived and, upon seeing Tang Ying, remarked, Mr. Ma, seems like you've been going for a more intellectual style recently. Ma Qiwan introduced them, saying, this is my big brother, Mr. Li, and Tang Ying she's the lawyer for Jun Hen. Su Zikuan received a message from Yu Chuan Chuan, asking him to treat her to hot pot. While they were eating, he asked her, if a girl accepts a kiss from a guy, does that mean she accepts his love? Yu Chuan Chuan responded confidently, of course. So, who are you dating? Su Zikuan chuckled and replied, what era are we in? Who still talks about dating? Tang Ying observed the mistress at the table, casually chatting and eating, and suddenly felt that she shouldn't have come. She could sense that Ma Qiwan was subtly trying to imply that he wanted her to be with him. To avoid confrontation, she pretended to be oblivious, playing along with the situation. While driving Tang Ying home, Ma Qiwan mentioned, I used to have a friend who lived in this building too. Tang Ying held back from telling him that the friend he was referring to was her sister, Xinzi. When Tang Ying returned home, she felt that choosing to meet Ma Qiwan instead of Su Zikuan that day was a mistake. Determined to make it right, she went to see Su Zikuan, only to find no one was home. She texted him, apologizing, I'm sorry I disappointed you today. I'll treat you to hot pot next time. Su Zikuan immediately called her. As it turned out, both of them were standing outside each other's rooms while talking on the phone. He told her, after you left, I invited another girl to have hot pot with me. Tang Ying replied, well, in that case, I don't feel so bad anymore. Su Zikuan, sensing something off, asked, what's going on? You don't sound too happy. She responded, yes, I'm really upset but hearing that you had hot pot with another girl has made me feel a lot better now. After hanging up, Tang Ying felt a sense of relief, while Su Zikuan felt uncomfortable. However, he soon received a message from the property management saying that someone had been seen loitering suspiciously outside his door on the surveillance footage. When he checked the video, he saw Tang Ying outside his door. Overjoyed, he couldn't help but dance in the street, jumping up and down.